Hello guys, I am Paul McCorder with TopTechBoy.com and I am here with lesson number one on using the, uh, the Raspberry Pi microcontroller. Now if you've been with us uh, through our first series of lessons, in our first series of lessons we taught you how to use the Arduino and I think I had about 27 lessons and if you went through those you would be quite the expert on using the Arduino microcontroller. And what you learned is, is that the, the Arduino is really easy to use and you can get up and going on it very quickly and you can do some really neat and some really exciting projects on it. Then we had our second series of lessons, which was using the Arduino microcontroller with Python. So you could have Python running on your PC, and you could have it working with the Arduino microcontroller. And we got all the way up to doing things like building uh, GPS trackers with data loggers. Uh, we did a lot with pressure and temperature. We did a lot with graphing. We did a lot with virtual reality. And, and so we did some pretty, pretty sophisticated projects with the uh, Arduino microcontroller. And we still love the Arduino microcontroller. But everyone eventually reaches the point that you have projects that you're just going to need more horsepower than what you can get out of the Arduino. And in fact, usually where you sort of hit the wall is with the amount of memory that you have on the, on the Arduino. If you remember, we built a GPS tracker where we had an SD card, and we had the Arduino, and we had the GPS unit, and you could walk around and log your data to the SD card, then you could show it on Google Earth. Well, what you would find is, I think several people tried to take that project and then add an LCD display to it. We know how to do LCD displays, so that was a natural thing to try. But what you would find at that point, loading the libraries to run the SD card, loading the libraries to run the GPS, and loading the libraries uh, to run the uh, LCD display, SD card, and, and, uh, and GPS, loading all those libraries, you would run out of memory on the Arduino. And so what we're going to start is we're going to start a new series of lessons. And in this new series of lessons, we are going to take all the things that we already learned about programming, but we're going to move up to a more sophisticated microcontroller called the Raspberry Pi. Now you can see that it's about the same size as the, uh, as the Arduino, but this, uh, this Raspberry Pi has like the computing power of a desktop computer, and so it's got like a quad-core processor in it. This is the Raspberry Pi Model 2, and the good thing is you can buy one of these things for under 50 bucks, and so they're really affordable. They're not that much more uh, expensive than the uh, Arduino. And so what we're doing today is just kind of introducing you to the Raspberry Pi. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through a series of lessons very similar to what we did on the, uh, on the uh, Arduino. Uh, on these lessons, I'm going to assume that you know nothing because I make these lessons for high school students. And so we're going to just start by assuming that you don't know anything at all. And we're going to kind of take you through developing and getting your Pi's up and going and programming them uh, uh, from scratch. It would be useful if you took our earlier Arduino series of lessons because those are really a good, that's a good place to start is with the Arduino. And also when we get this up and running we're going to be doing a lot of programming in Python and so that series of lessons I did on running uh, the Arduino with Python, the Python part of those lessons will carry over to the Raspberry Pi. Okay so really today what we've got to get I think figured out with this is it's just really what gives Gear you're going to need to get a Raspberry Pi up and running. And so obviously the first thing that you're going to need is a Raspberry Pi. You can get one for under 50 bucks. I recommend the Raspberry Pi Model 2, which is the state of the art, still under 50 bucks, but state of the art as of the time that I am writing this lesson. And all of my lessons will be based on the Raspberry Pi Model 2. The second thing that you're going to need is you're going to need an SD card, a micro SD card. I like to have about a 16 gig micro SD card. Micro, that's the little bitty one, small one. Yes, okay. I like to have about a 16 gig one. That's that's really affordable. They're really cheap. And it has the storage that you would need to run your Raspberry Pi. Also, uh, this whole SD card, it's not like where you're dumping a few pictures or something. This is going to be where 
whatever your operating system is. And so I recommend getting a SanDisk. Get a good one. Don't try to get an off-name one or an off-brand one or a, a cheap one. You really want to get a, a good SD card. So you got your Raspberry Pi. you got your SD card. And if you go to toptechboy.com, I've got some links on all this stuff to help you get stuff that I have found actually works. Another thing that you're going to need, uh, you're going to need to power this. You can see that uh, it's powered through one of these very small USB connectors. I'm not sure exactly what the name of that connector is, but like a, I think it's a micro USB. And uh, what I've found is, is that if you start hooking things up to the Pi, you might not get the power that you need off of the, uh, off of the USB if you just plug it into your computer. So a uh, power supply is something good. And again, I've got some links to all this stuff. Uh, this is just a little power, uh, uh, power supply that you plug into the wall with the little USB connector on the end. I would get one of these rather than trying to run it off of your computer uh, USB. Okay, finally, what you're going to need is you're going to need a cable. And the cable is probably one of the trickier things as far as getting the Raspberry Pi up and running. And what you can see is, is that it has an HDMI output. Okay, it has an HDMI output. And the problem is, is that most computer monitors uh, do, or a lot of the ones that, that maybe aren't brand new don't have just the straight HDMI input. And so one of the trickiest things of getting the Pi working is getting something where you go HDMI to whatever, uh, whatever, type, of, uh, whatever type of monitor it is that you, uh, that you have. I will uh, warn you. Let's see if I can find it here. I do not see it. But uh, a lot of the old, a lot of the old uh, computer, a lot of the old computer monitors have VGA inputs. And if you go to Amazon, you can find a cable that is HDMI on one end and VGA on the other. I've tried a lot of those and I cannot get them to work because it's not just getting the right connector on the ends, it's getting the the data stream formatted right in a cable, you know, to go from uh, HDMI to VGA, you know, you've got to convert it to the analog. You can't just get things with the connector and plug it in. And so I warn you to not just go to Amazon and get something that has a, 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 a HDMI on one end and a VGA on another. I've tried five or six of those uh, and I've not been able to get them to work. Like the idiot that I am, the first time I ordered them, I ordered 20 of them enough for my whole class and I got them in and found that they did not work at all and then I tried a different one and they didn't work. What I have found that does work if you do need to go from the HDMI to VGA I found and I've got a link on Top Tech Boy uh, for this it's the Belkin uh, converter and if you get this converter and plug this into the Raspberry Pi then you can just use a standard VGA cable and you can go VGA to VGA. Uh, the kit that I recommend uh, for the uh, Raspberry Pi again on my uh, on my website uh, the kit actually has uh, an HDMI to HDMI and so the cable that comes with the kit will work if your monitor has the HDMI input. If it doesn't you will need to get some sort of uh, some sort of converter. And so let's actually go and look at the gear that uh, that I'm recommending here. In future lessons what we're going to do is we will go in and show you how to configure this and get all the other things working. But for right now let's just sort of see what we need. Go to my website www.toptechboy.com. You can tra track these series of lessons by looking up here at the top, toptechboy.com, come across to Raspberry Pi lessons, and then we are on lesson number one, okay? And on lesson number one, I give an introduction to the Raspberry Pi, and then you can come down, and if you come down to about the third paragraph, I give you a link to a kit that I've had a lot of luck with. This kit is about 85 bucks at the time that I'm publishing this. It has the Model 2 Raspberry Pi. It has a case. A case is really pretty important, especially if you're working with high school students. You can see the back of this has a bunch of wires, and if you just put this down on something metal, you're going to short those things out. And so having this neat... Uh, Having, uh, let's see, where do we go here? Having a plastic case of some type is, 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 is a pretty good idea. This also has uh, the SD, the micro SD card, and it also has the micro SD card adapter. It's kind of neat to get the adapter because most computers you can't plug the micro SD card into. And so if you get the, uh, if you get this kit, you get the adapter and you can load your, you can load your operating systems in your Windows, uh, Windows environment. You 
also something that I really like with this is you get this uh, Wi-Fi adapter and I've got one here I believe and the neat thing about this Wi-Fi adapter is you see it's a little bitty thing you can plug it into the uh, USB port and then you've got Wi-Fi you don't have to plug in the Ethernet cable okay so that's uh, that's pretty uh, that's pretty neat so what I recommend is I recommend that if you get this kit you're gonna have everything you need not only to get the Pi up and running but you also got some things that you can start building some projects with you've got the power supply that you need some buttons you got sort of a breakout board and ribbon cable so that you can bring your signals out and start working between the Pi and the circuit sort of like the types of things we were doing with the Spark Fun Inventor Kit when we were working on Arduino. And so I really recommend this kit. The other thing that I recommend if you come down just a little bit below that, if your monitor has a DVI input, and let me see if I have a DVI cable here to show you. Uh, I'm not seeing my DVI cable. But a lot of the uh, a lot of the monitors don't want HDMI inputs, but they will take DVI. If you look here, maybe I've got a picture of it here. Yeah, you can plug this end into the Arduino, and then look at your computer and see if it has a DVI input. I mean, your monitor. A lot of your monitors will have these DVI inputs, and therefore, if you have a DVI input besides the kit, you would need to get this cable. And again, I give a link on my website. Finally, if you're really using an old monitor, a really old monitor that only has a VGA input, you will need this, which I give the link here, the VGA uh, uh, projector adapter. I've gotten this to work with the Raspberry Pi. This end goes in the Raspberry Pi. This one you then just use a standard VGA cable. But this actually has in here the converter that converts the HDMI signal to the VGA signal. And so this one actually works. So what I in the end recommend is I recommend that you get the kit. I think you could try to put these things together on your own, but by the time you get it all put together, you're probably going to pay as much or more as getting it all at once. And what I can say is, is that I've worked with these things and they actually work. The power supply works. Uh, you know, it's a good S card, the, the case is nice, and then you've got these breakouts and so forth. So the, this is the gear that we're going to be using in these lessons, and it's really what I recommend that you, uh, that you get. Let me just say a little bit more about this Raspberry Pi. If you think of the Arduino, really the Arduino, you write a program on your PC, you dump it into the Arduino, and then the Arduino sits in. It's really, really powerful for working with circuit elements or working with uh, sensors or actuators. Uh, it's very good at those things, but it's not very interactive. It, you know, there's no graphics capability. You just have sort of a very limited ability to interact with it. Uh, you know, there's no on-board operating system that you can work in. You write your program, you download it into it, and then this goes and does its thing. What's different is, is that the Raspberry Pi is more like a full-fledged desktop computer. What I'm going to start in my lessons, I'll first of all show you how to just get things uh, just get things installed and get it booted and up and running. Uh, after that, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be learning Linux. Now, you know, we're going to be learning the practical Linux that you need to be able to find your way around the operating system, install software, uh, copy things, move things, delete things, uh, you know, find your way around. And we're going to be doing that by in these lessons learning the uh, learning the command line and so here you can see we have a terminal window I can do something like LS and I can see what uh, where I am and what uh, what programs are there I can change directories I can LS I can do things like that work my way around we're going to start by learning Linux because really if we're going to be doing this you need to learn Linux okay so we're going to start the command line we're going to start in the command line window, the terminal window, and we're going to learn how to operate a computer from the command line. If you have never done this, it's really fun. It, you just, it's like you really don't want to go back and start using Windows again once you get good at the Linux command line. So we're going to learn the Linux command line, how to install things, how to do all that. After that, what we're going to learn is, is that you can actually boot the Pi up, not in the command line, but you can boot the Pi up in something that looks a lot like Microsoft Windows here. You can see that we've got a menu, we've got different programs that we can run. There's actually a free version of something very similar to Office Microsoft 
Microsoft Office where you can get a word processor running. We can get graphics running. We can do almost anything on this, on this Raspberry Pi that you could do in a full-fledged uh, Windows-based desktop computer. And so we will go in and we will show you how to get this stuff going. But like I say, when we start, <clears throat> we're going to be booting up in the terminal window and we're really going to learn something because if we just go into Windows, you might as well just buy a laptop and sit and poke around on a laptop. <clears throat> to really learn the system, you need to learn how to operate a computer from the terminal window. Okay, so... To kind of summarize, we love the Arduino. We will still be using the Arduino. I mean, eventually, what we're going to be using is the Raspberry Pi to do the heavy computation. But still, I like using the Arduino to control the sensors or to control the actuators. And so in a lot of times, what we're going to be using is taking advantage of each one. The Arduino is very good for instrument control, sensor control, operating servos and actuators. And then the, uh, and then the Raspberry Pi is good for doing the graphics or manipulating strings or doing things like that. So in a lot of projects, we'll be using both of these. But since you already know how to use the Arduino, we're just going to start now by learning how to use the Raspberry Pi. So tune in for our next lesson. In a couple of days, I should have the, the next lesson up, which will actually show you how to download the operating system to the SD card and to boot up the Raspberry Pi. Okay, Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. Hope you'll think about su su subscribing to my channel or maybe giving me a thumbs up on the video. Take it easy, guys, and we will see you on lesson two.